So today we conclude our 12-week journey through the biblical story of the Exodus. And these many weeks, we have journeyed with the Israelites, the Hebrew people, as God, through Moses, freed them from slavery in Egypt and then led them through the wilderness and into the land promised to their ancestors. And so today, as Chuck alluded to for us, we hear their current leader, Joshua, remind them of their spiritual heritage of God's faithfulness over generations as Joshua challenged them to reaffirm their commitment to God, their covenant with God to serve God and God alone. And so we turn to read that scripture uh, as we welcome for a final time the art of our featured artist, the Reverend Shauna Bowman, who depicts today's scripture in her painting featured on our worship slides titled Covenant at Shechem. So let us listen with open minds and hearts as Barb and I read our scripture now. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, <clears throat> Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and many and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did these great things in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived on the land. Therefore, we will serve the Lord for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord, our God, we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. And so we give thanks for this God's holy word today. Please pause for a moment of prayer with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Oh, what a week. Am I right? 
After a contentious election, unlike any I have ever seen, in the middle of a pandemic with the local community spread of COVID-19 soaring, everyone I know is feeling a bit wrung out. Some are relieved, others are deeply worried, but seemingly everyone is exhausted. And so we are all left to wonder, where do we go from here? What's next? What now? For all of us as people of faith, today's scripture picked for worship months and months ago provides a clear and decisive answer. Joshua, nearing the end of his earthly life, seeks to leave the Hebrew people, the Israelites, in right relationship with God. Joshua knows that the people are living through a contentious, tender time in their growth as a people, as a community, as a nation. God has faithfully led them from slavery to freedom, asking only for their faithfulness in return, but still many among them are giving their allegiance to the ageless powers of comfort and ease, money and social standing, to self-interest and selfish pursuits. So Joshua calls them to account. Joshua summarizes for the people all that God has done for them and their ancestors. Joshua reminds them how God was with Abraham and Sarah and their descendants, how God worked through the midwives and Moses to free the people from slavery in Egypt, and how God guided them through the wilderness and as they entered the land promised to their ancestors. Then Joshua says, Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve the Lord in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away other gods. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose. Joshua's charge is timeless. Whether you are rejoicing this day or lamenting this day, as God's people, our charge this day is still the same. Choose whom you will serve. Choose this day and the next day and every day, all day. Because God's dreams don't begin or end with an election won or lost because God's desire for justice to roll down like mighty waters isn't dependent on who resides in the White House because one individual isn't responsible for the ills and challenges we face, nor will one individual be able to heal all those ills. We we are God's people. God entrusted God's dreams to us. So we must choose and keep choosing like the Israelites before us to turn from the ageless powers of comfort, ease, and self-interest and turn toward God's dream that all would have enough, that all would be free, that all would love God and love neighbor, that all would do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Regardless of how any of us voted this week as God's people, there is still much work to do. So yes, we're exhausted. Take those deep breaths. Take that walk in the woods. 
Take that needed nap, refresh your spirit, tend your weary soul. But then here again, Joshua's timeless charge. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose not just today, not just once, not only when it's convenient, but always this day and the next day and every day, all day. For as the great, wise, and beloved wizard Albus Dumbledore once advised young Harry Potter, it's our choices that show what we truly are. And we are God's people. So I don't have a ton of words this day. I just have... Joshua's charge and this prayer for you and for me and for all of us together that this day and this week and this year and in all that is to come, that every choice we make would show the world that we are indeed God's people and that we choose God's ways, that we choose to serve God, the God of our ancestors, who works through strong women like the Hebrew midwives, willing to defy tyrants, to preserve and protect and nurture life. God, who works through hesitant and imperfect people like Moses, to rise up great leaders, God who will stop at nothing, to free people abused and bent low by injustice and oppression, God who goes before us and behind us in all our wilderness wonderings, God who provides manna, daily provision in the desert and water in parched places, God who is faithful to us, even when we turn toward the golden calf of comfort, God who knows freedom is hard and so gives us the law, holy guidance for how to live in freedom, in communion with God and community with one another, God who gives us all a role to play and a place to belong in the great cloud of witnesses seeking God's dream for the world. That's our God. That's the God of our ancestors who is still at work today and every day. And so let us choose our God this day and always, for it is by God's power that we will see all those dreams come into being, whether we rejoice or lament, no matter how tired we are, when we choose God, we choose to lean into the future that is promised, the future where we will all know goodness and love and justice and peace. To God be the glory. Amen.